The use of Agueros in the administration of the Lagos transport system dates back to the 1970s when the Lagos state government lost the plot on regulating commercial buses. According to historian Ayodeji Olukoju, it all started with the use of refined miscreants to prevent unauthorized parking on Lagos Island. In effect, the government introduced area boys to help it do its job, at least in collecting levies in the 90s. This has brought us to the recent strike. On October 31, 2022, commuters were stranded in parts of Lagos as bus drivers boycotted the roads to start a planned seven-day strike. The Joint Drivers Welfare Association of Nigeria had threatened a boycott of routes from the 31st of October because of excessive extortion and harassment of drivers at various bus stops, garages, and parks in Lagos. The association lamented that its drivers were losing half of their daily income to motor park boys. We're not very deep. When we walk finish at the end of the day, it's just zero. So when we suffer, we eat our sweat. How for them to eat our sweat? These drivers appear to have woken up to their reality, which sees them paying more taxes as a proportion of their income daily. According to a 2021 study by SBM Intel, 67% of Lagos bus drivers pay more than 3,000 Naira in taxes daily. They are taxed more per day and by more organizations than transporters anywhere in Nigeria. Notably, most of these drivers pay because of the threat of violence made against them by the Agberos who function as collection agents. Before the National Union of Road Transport Workers, NURTW, emerged, the Lagos state government made several attempts to regulate the transport system. In 1929, ZARPAS partnered with the Lagos Town Council, which used licenses to control commercial bus operations in the state to provide commercial bus services. Unable to serve the entire population, even though it tried to seek monopolistic control, the town council filled in the gap by giving licenses to other transporters. The council set caps on how many buses could ply any route, new or old. All buses, including those of Zarpas, were periodically inspected by a vehicle inspection officer. Even when the town council bought Zarpas's assets in 1958 and launched the Lagos Motor Transport Service, it maintained the use of licenses to regulate the quality and number of buses operating within the state. However, the population explosion after the Civil War and the transformation of Lagos from a colony to a state saw the creation of the Lagos State Transport Corporation, whose inefficiency occasioned the emergence of wooden-type bole kajas and damfos to meet rising passenger demand. The NURTW reflects this inefficiency concerning the lack of qualified staff and the inability to regulate the quality and number of buses operating within the state. Besides serving its members' interests, the NURTW serves the political function of generating funds and votes for the ruling party in Lagos. A 2020 International Center for Investigative Reporting investigation published in 2021, revealed that the NURTW in Lagos generated up to 123.1 billion naira annually from its daily collections. This is more than the legally generated revenue of every Nigerian state apart from Lagos. Being a significant revenue generator, the state government ignores the NURTW's excesses and steps in only when its in-house tussles degenerate into open violence. Money, for more money, for more dropping, for more devices, everything. Interestingly, how Lagos drivers are taxed mirrors the dynamics of Nigeria's informal sector taxation. Informal businesses such as open market traders and artisans pay taxes albeit in an informal way and most times to non-state recognized actors. This challenges the assumption that many working Nigerians do not pay taxes. In fact, 98% of informal sector businesses pay taxes, according to the 2021 SBM study. However, in many cases, these taxes are largely not captured in official records either at the state or federal level. Lagos State's Auditor General recently indicated that monies collected by persons on behalf of the government are not calculated as revenues and by implication are not accounted for. 
It was said in the most recent financial statement for 2021 that, quote, amounts collected as an agent of the government or on behalf of third parties are technically not considered revenue, end of quote. It is no wonder that these taxpayers hardly reap any gains from their payments, yet they continue to pay and have their disposable income reduced. Using unions, market associations, or even resorting to force to drive tax compliance only leads to double taxation and revenue leakage. Per the 2021 ICIR report, only 200 naira of the estimated 5,400 naira collected from drivers and riders of commercial vehicles, that is Danfos, Kakes, and Okadas, is remitted to the local government or council development areas. In essence, the states must successfully incorporate the informal sector into its tax net to expand its tax base. To achieve this, the incidence of multiple and arbitrary taxes need to be addressed urgently and the activities of unions and non-state actors that place a tax burden on citizens should be checked. Additionally, the government needs to solve the identity management problem for its citizens through the use of NIN and surmount the distrust citizens have for it by providing the necessary infrastructure that justifies payments of taxes.